on the day of the preaching or the truth of the gospel message that Jesus saves, he heals and he delivers. He's still on the throne. And there's only one way to make it into heaven. So many people have gotten away from preaching the gospel in today's church. It has become more about entertainment than anything else. These are the days where if you have an entertainment in your church or it's a platform for entertainment, mm -hmm. that place is going to explode. Because it's about entertainment and having fun and feeling good. That's the day we live in. When we look at the life of Jesus and the apostles, it was all about saving souls. Getting back to saving souls is what the church needs to do. Making people aware of God's plan of salvation because life on earth is all about the life and the hereafter. Amen. This life here on earth is leading somewhere and it's leading to eternity. Amen. People desperately need to know that. Amen. Not only do they need to know that, but they need constant reminders yes. <laughs> that we all are headed somewhere. Amen. <laughs> Like they used to say in the old days, there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shine. But when Jesus came, his sole purpose, focus, was all about saving souls. Yes. Just get down to the nitty gritty. Amen. It was about bringing mankind to the knowledge of the truth, which is him. There's only one way to be saved. And he came to make that clear. Right. Yeah. It's through the gospel that saved. Amen. Amen. The Great Commission. Go into all the world. What we're supposed to do, preach? Yeah. Yeah. Verse 4 of the text says, Jesus gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present age. The evil age yeah. is what he's saying. Yeah. It's speaking about the world system. Yeah. This worldly system that we live in. Uh -huh. The world system is ruled by Satan. Amen. He's over that system. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 tells us that Satan is the god of this world. Yeah. So that means that the people that are in the world are serving their God, Satan. He's the God of this world. Verse 3 of that same passage says, If the gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Because Satan has blinded their minds. They can't see the truth of this glorious gospel. This lets us know, the scripture here, that everybody is not going to be saved. Right. Everybody has got some family. Amen. But everybody in your family, immediate, extended family, uh -huh. there's, there's probably hundreds of people in your family, if not thousands. Right. Everybody is not going to be saved. Amen. That's just the way it is. Amen. <laughs> We may want them saved, but everybody got to make their own way. Because they've got to choose who they're going to serve. And you can't make that choice for them. You can walk them saved all you want. But God's not going to override their will. He will always send somebody. He will always deal with people as we pray for family members and yes. loved ones and friends and God will deal with them Amen. 
but it's up to them to heed the message. To answer the call. To submit to the wooing of the Holy Spirit. To hear His voice. Because many people reject the knowledge of the truth. They reject the convictions of the Holy Spirit. And He will convict a person's heart. When they hear the truth of the gospel message, the Holy Spirit goes to work. But people have the prerogative to reject it if they don't want it. <laughs> it's like this. If you don't want to be saved, you don't have to be saved. But we saw it in the last installment. He's not willing that any should perish. No. No. God wants to save. Yes. Yes. That was the purpose. That is the reason why he came into the earth to die. Yes. Yes. Give his life a ransom for all mankind. Yes. But the scripture lets us know that everybody is not going to be saved. And you know what? Much as I hate to say it, some people are just bound for hell. Amen. Amen. That's true. Now that might not be nice for some for somebody to hear or you know to say. Some people think, but it's not trying to be nice. It's about telling the truth. Amen. Some people are just bound for hell and that's their choice yeah. that's because there are people who do not want to hear the truth yeah. so they can never be saved because of their rejection and their hatred for the truth it's just like with the Pharisees when Jesus was on earth going about preaching the gospel doing his ministry you got the Pharisees the Judaizers and all following him up and they hated the truth always trying to trap him yeah. always plant, plotting to kill him and he knew it because he could read their hearts because of the truth yeah. we live in a day where the truth is hated Amen. the gospel of the kingdom is becoming more and more hated by the masses. Why do people reject the gospel? Why do they hate the gospel, this culture, this society? Because the Bible says that there's only one way. Amen. Amen. Only one way. Amen. It's not the gospel of inclusion. It's, it's not universal gospel like all other religions are included in this. Mm -hmm. Just accept this gospel, but also that's okay if you, you know, you want to be a Buddhist, that's fine, that's okay, just believe in Jesus too. It's okay if you want to be a Muslim and you adhere to the Quran, but hold Jesus in the other hand, in the Bible, in the other hand. Mm -hmm. just, just be in agreement, include everything. Humanism, all of these things, transcendental meditation, just everything, world religion. Well, that's not acceptable. The Word of God rejects that. Jesus rejects that. And there's only one way. And God in his wisdom chose to save man through Jesus only. Amen. God being God, think about this, could have chose a whole lot of, lot of ways to get to him. He could have created many roads. 
wanting to say so bad that you can say, well, uh, people are so stubborn that they're not going to just accept me. Uh, let me open up all these other roads and maybe they'll just lead to me somehow. God could have done that, but he didn't do that. Because all of the roads, all of the gods are really false gods. There's one true God, only one true God. Jesus is the only savior of the world. There are no more saviors. Only one Messiah. It's all wrapped up in Jesus. It's through the message of the gospel that God has chosen to save humanity. Yes. Yes. The message of the gospel. Amen. Once you hear what Jesus did yes. for you, yes. because he did it for everybody. Yes. Once you hear that message, the Holy Spirit goes to work and something happens on the inside of you. That's the point where you're either going to believe the gospel and be saved or you're going to walk in disbelief and reject it and say, uh, I'll try something else. But there's only one way. Amen. And we've got to stick to this message in this last day. Because it's so popular to go left and to back down and to give in. When you look at the great falling away, and we there right now, look, look around. <laughs> There's a great falling away. And we we now the thing is that if you keep if you look at that, you will get kind of down or discouraged about it. Right. And, and maybe even some folk just want to throw in the towel and go the way everybody else is. What's the use? But that's the trick of the enemy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we got to keep our eyes on the prize. Yes. It doesn't matter who comes and who goes. Because people been coming and going since Jesus went back to heaven. Amen. And they're going to continue to come and go. In and out. Backwards and forward. Can't make their mind of choosing the world of flesh and the devil over God. Taking spiritual things lightly. Everything else comes before God. God's on the back burner. I'll get to him when I get tired. That's the day we live in. But we got to keep our hands to the plow yeah. and not look back. I don't care who backslides and wants to go their own way. I'm going to keep following Jesus all the way. See, when you see these things happening around us, it's a clear-cut sign that the Bible is right. Prophecy is being fulfilled and Jesus is soon to return. Amen. He said himself, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? That, 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 there's going to be a lot of people looking for him. That's going to be a faithful few. Right. Compared to all the people that are going to be lost. Because right. this is the age of, I want to do it my way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is the age of greasy grace. Instead of clinging to the truth Amen. of the word of God. And doing all you can yes. to make it in. Amen. 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 Like never before in the history of the world, we are witnessing a great falling away from the gospel. Amen. 
truth of scripture. We see it right before us. A lot of people are searching for more, listen, than the Bible. Right. <laughs> they want more than the Bible. I, I like the Bible, but, but is, is there something more? You'll be amazed. That's the new thing. Something more. Let's add something to this. So they start looking for new things to scratch the itch that they have. And that is easy prey for the devil. Amen. When your ears are on fire and you want them scratched and the truth no longer is good enough, right. the simple gospel message is not a complicated message. It's simple. It's not a deep message where you're stupefied. Woo! That's deep. Woo! Boy, I don't understand that at all. You should old preacher. Not. If you're not bringing understanding, you ain't doing nothing at all. A lot of foolishness out there today. Man, did these different prophets and preachers and apostles coming up with new revelations. I heard some foolish preachers say that the, the Bible is not the only revelation. God can stop uh, giving a revelation after the Bible. He's still giving out revelation. False teaching. This is it. <laughs> Ain't no extra stuff. God's not still writing scripture. The canon was complete. We don't need no extra biblical teaching. We're going to stick with what says the Lord. Because what says what does say the Lord is truth. Amen. Amen. And we don't want nothing else. Nothing but the truth. Amen. Come on, sister. Nothing but the truth. Give me the truth. Amen. And nothing but the truth. No add-on stuff. Amen. Amen. The gospel simply has to do with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the gospel. It's good news. It's the good news. Amen. What's the good news? Jesus saves. Amen. What's the good news? Jesus came to save you Amen. from your sins. To save your soul. To save you from hell and destruction in the lake of fire. Amen. Eternal damnation. Now, I would say that's good news. Oh, that's great news. Then I don't have to die and go to hell. And Jesus loves you enough to save you and make a way of escape for you through his death, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah in this place. Oh, that's the gospel. But it also includes the virgin birth. Because Jesus was not only human, he was divine. 100% God, 100% man. We'll look at that as we approach Christmas, which is some weeks away. This qualified him to be the perfect sacrifice for sin. Amen. Right. Amen. No one else qualified. No one else could qualify. Because no one else is God and man. Amen. <laughs> Only Jesus, one of a kind, unique in all his ways. Yes. 
Only he could do what no one else could do. He did for you what you couldn't even do for yourself. So that means that all of the honor and all of the glory belongs to him and he alone because he did it all. That's why we glorify him. That's why we lift up his name. Because he's done great things. Great things. And the greatest thing that he's done is save you from your sin. It's about high time that we got excited that we're saved. If I wasn't preaching, I'd run right about now. I'm saved. It's a wonderful thing to be able to say, I'm saved. Woo wee. When the last time y'all said that? Today? <laughs> I'm saved. Isn't that so? What if we woke up every morning and when we opened our eyes? I'm saved. That'll set your day before the devil can mess up your day. I'm saved. I may not have everything that I want. Come on, you, you right there. But I'm saved. I may have some troubles and some problems in my life. And I'm still waiting on this to happen and for that prayer to be answered. And I'm going through this and I'm going through that. But guess what? I'm saved. That ought to turn your attitude around. That ought to bring back the joy of the Lord. Because you could have all those things going on with you and not be saved at the same time. Now, where does that get you? Yeah, you, you need to be depressed because you're not saved. See, all of that will bring you down then. Yeah. But if you got, I'm saved to hang on to. Everything else can fall by the wayside. But God has me in the palm of his hand. He's holding me. He's keeping me. He's saving me. Being saved. I'm saved and being saved. It's a continual process. Until Jesus comes back. Then it will be complete. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God in the heights. The apostle Paul, he lived to preach the gospel. He lived to preach the gospel. His life was totally dedicated to the saving of souls. That's all that mattered to him after he was called by God, struck down on the road to Damascus, persecute Christians. God knocked him down off his high horse. How many did God have to knock down off your high horse? Maybe not, I'm not even talking about a, a real horse, just off of your pedestal. Off of me, myself, and I. All about you, living your life your way, doing your own thing. That's your high horse. But one day, Jesus showed up. Knocked you down off of your high horse. Woo! And that was a new day. Oh, what a glorious day. Hallelujah. And you wouldn't trade nothing for it now. Nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, after he did that with the Apostle Paul, he's been serving him or was serving him ever since after that. Yes. Totally committed his life yes. to Jesus. Amen. That's a question I'm going to ask you. Have you totally committed your life to him? Yes. 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 Totally. totally. Completely. Paul didn't only totally commit his life to him, but he totally committed his life 
to the preaching of the gospel. Amen. He was a missionary. He was an evangelist sent to the Gentile world to save them. And he was passionate about his missionary work. Passionate. Are you passionate for souls? That's what mattered most at the apostle was called. The saving of soul. The saving of soul. How many times a week do we think of that? Mm. Conviction. Amen. Conviction. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Well, we, we too caught up with the mundane things yes. of this world. Right. Yes. And they hold us captive. Yes. And we forget all about it. you are a vessel saved by God. Amen. Ordained to go out there. That's right. And share the gospel with somebody. Amen. And it doesn't matter where it is. And you don't wait for an opportunity. You create the opportunity. People open the door up all the time. But we, 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 we just give them our wisdom. And talk on their level. Cause we, I don't know if they're gonna really hear if I bring up God. You chicken, you. Amen. Talk about the Lord. Amen. Bring Him up. Amen. God may have sent them to you just for that purpose. Waiting on you. You got the answer to their problem, and you won't even say it. Amen. Cause you worry about what they're going to think. Stop worrying about what they're going to think. You got to open up your mouth and share the good news. Don't go to heaven alone. He saved you and you're on your way to heaven. And you're looking at everybody else perish going on their way to hell in a handbasket and you just hoping somehow God will send them a, send them a dream or an angel down from heaven or some other way. No, you are the angel. Amen. With the message. Messenger. And you've got a message. And see, if he saved you, if you know he saved you, just share that. Amen. <laughs> Start right there. That's it. He saved me. Now you know how that happened. I know you can explain what happened to you. Someone needs to know that that can happen to them too. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory in this place. Paul was about preaching the gospel. And that's what we ought to do is preach the gospel while we can. Preach the gospel while we can. Tell the word. Share our faith everywhere we go. Take Jesus to everybody we know. Amen. The song I wrote back in 09. Preach the gospel. Amen. That's our job. Amen. Even if you don't wear the label preacher, it doesn't matter. Amen. You are an evangelist. Yes. And you are to evangelize yes. in the streets. Amen. Take it out there. Yes. Carry the water to the desert yes. where it's needed. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because see, today, y'all in here, and what are you doing? You're gathering water. Uh -huh. You're gathering water. What are you going to do with the water that you gather today? Because it's, it's being given out. Because this world is giving out some water. Uh -huh. Yeah, so when you go out there with those buckets, you're not supposed to go home and sit them down. 
and do nothing with them, you got to carry the water out there where it's needed. Somebody's thirsty and dying and on their way to an eternal hell Amen. and lake of fire. Amen. Take the water where it's needed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, take the water to the desert. <laughs> in Galatians chapter 1, Paul had to remind the churches in Galatia that there was only one gospel. One gospel. Not many. Say it with me. One gospel. One gospel. And Satan has always used the false teachers to distort, alter, and change the truth of the gospel message. Amen. Always. Mm -hmm. And we live in an age, we live in a time where many churches are preaching another gospel. Yes. Yes. Many churches are preaching doctrines of demons. It's not the truth. Amen. I said it's not the truth. Amen. He says in verse 6, Galatians 1, scriptures read in our hearing, I marvel that you are turning away so soon, he says, but they heard the true gospel. Uh -huh. And he says, I marvel, I'm shocked. <laughs> Y'all turning away so soon. From him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Huh. What, what, what was preached, what was taught is, is not good enough. Because see, the Judaizers was coming back behind Paul and teaching something else. Yeah. You're saved by works. You're saved by the law. You got to stick to the Mosaic law, circumcision, all these rules and regulations. You got to measure up. You got to earn your way. Another gospel. Anytime a church or denomination throws their rule book in there, <laughs> That's another gospel. Amen. Yes, it is. Amen. Yes, it is. Yeah, God saved you, but you know, you, you, you got to wear your, your dresses down to your ankles like you just got off the wagon train. <laughs> you don't do that, you're going to hell. If you can't wear no makeup, you, you're, going, you're, going to set the, you're going to the flames. Adding man made rules. You can't do this. You can't do that. Show me in the Bible. Well, it ain't in there, but well, shut up. Amen. Shut your mouth. Amen. Extra biblical teaching. Add-ons. We ain't purchasing no add-ons. No add-ons. Tell, tell me, give it to me like it is. Yeah, if Jesus didn't add it, don't you go at it. Amen. Amen. He's at a different gospel. Yeah. Isn't it something that that's not new? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They were doing that back then. Yeah. Jump, pop, 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 pop. Oh, over there, they ooh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh wait. I didn't know that part. Give me, give me, give, give me some of that. Another God opened up to all kinds of stuff. Amen. He said to a different gospel. I'm shocked at y'all in so many words. He said, which is not another. In other words, you're going after another gospel, but guess what? There really ain't no other one. Right. Is what he said. There's really not another one. Amen. Wow. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. They want to pervert it. They want to alter it. They want to change it. 
they doing that like crazy all over the place. One guy is super popular out in California. Boy, he's got folk following him like, uh, uh, I mean, like a herd of cattle just storm, storm trooping toward uh, the gates of hell <laughs> with deceit and a lot of makeup stuff. People are falling for it. Lined up at the door, down, down the sidewalks, around the corner, coming from different cities, coming from different states, even from overseas to come there to get a false prophecy. Mm. To be deceived. Isn't that something that people will pay a purchase a plane ticket to go be deceived? To hear non-biblical truth. To sit under doctrines of demons. Because this guy constantly making up nonsensical stuff. That's not even in the Bible. And he's actually one that believes that Bible that ain't that's not all there is in here. And people flocking out there like crazy. Yeah, it's all over YouTube. And been proven. It's clear that they're teaching false stuff. Jesus is not the only way. He's only a portal. You got to access Peter <laughs> to get to God. Let's sign every one of y'all up for a check up in here. How about that? Because how do you believe that? That's nonsense. Peter is not the way. He's not God. Jesus is not the only door. He's not the door. Jesus said, I am the door. So, are you calling Jesus a liar? No, preacher, you a liar. That's right. See, see, you can't fall for foolishness. Stuff that's clearly, and I could go on and go on about different things that this guy says and have said. It's on YouTube. The stuff is recorded. But vote of, I mean, thousands. He's a big deal out there. And people are falling for the tricks and deceit. I'll say his name. His name is Lobi. That's his first name. Elias or something. He's just one of them. You got Passion John. I'll say his name. Which is actually his mentor or the one he's under. And he's basically all but admitted that he was false. <laughs> I mean, wife making false prophecies. All of this stuff is online. And people, the place being packed. It's really something how the person is still popular after not long ago, this woman is uh, calling herself prophesying to somebody on the phone. And she's, she's talking to this person on the phone, it's being recorded, and they're in church, and people are standing up and, and, and all of this, and she's talking to the lady and telling her that God showed her this, that today that her mother was going to be healed, I believe it was her mother, and he's going to raise her up, and this and that, and on and on and on and on. And she said, by the way, how, uh, how is your, I think she said, how is your mother? And the woman said, <laughs> she died in 09. Oh, wow. oh, that wicked False prophetess. Yeah. Look, she had egg all on her face. You could have bought her with a, a, a bag of dust. <laughs> and 
And every night, and just before that, people cheering and, and prophesy, prophesy, shut up. <laughs> That's some foolishness right there. When you got a hype man on the side in the microphone. Right. Yeah. Anytime you say something, they holler, prophesy. <laughs> prophesy. Come on, Pastor. Yeah, I hope some people watch this video on YouTube because I'm putting this on YouTube. <laughs> that follow that mess. People are easily just duped and deceived. No discernment whatsoever. When that person on the phone said she died in 09, everybody in there should have oh. Stormed out of there. But they sat there and stayed there looking like idiots. Yeah. Yes, I said. Wow. <laughs> and continue to follow these people. How do you continue to follow somebody that just got exposed in front of the whole world? And they lied. They didn't get that information. She wasn't getting that information from God. Actually, what happened was the devil tricked her and exposed her. Yeah. Made her look like a monkey. Right. The devil did. Wow. She turns around and looks and says, how did I see that? Uh, uh, who are you asking that? <laughs> you should have fell on your face prostrate and started repenting. And apologizing to everybody. I'm a false witch, y'all. I'm going to get saved today, though. I'll never prophesy a proper lie again. God ain't gave me nothing. Wow. And that's what people are falling for. Running to hear somebody stand up and tell them something. Sister, uh, Sister Joanne, uh, uh, I got a word for you. <laughs> this this brother right here sitting with, sitting by this lady in the black. Uh, uh, yeah, with, with the bald head. Yeah, you. Uh, the Lord is showing me that you got about three more years on the job and you gonna get rich. That's a lie. He just retired. He just retired. Well, people fall for that stuff and keep getting away with it. Keep getting away with it. Keep getting away with it. Because people want to be entertained. They don't care if it's makeup or lie. Makeup stuff or a lie. Just entertain me. No, Not in this church. Everybody know how I feel about that mess. Uh-uh. We get no clowns on stage to stand up here and call for God in the yard. Not going to happen. Mm-mm. And if it ever did, cut they mic. Cut, cut, cut that mic. No, I just come take the mic. You go sit down, brother. In fact, you, you just leave. <laughs> I don't play that. No false stuff. No sensationalism. No trick stuff. Now, we welcome the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, but it better be true. <laughs> we open. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, but it, it better be real. And we're going to test the spirit to see to be, if it be of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But that's what's going on out there. And that's what people are following. Perverting the gospel. The truth. He said, let me finish here, verse 8. But even if we or an angel from heaven 
Paul said. Now look what he said. This is some serious stuff. Even if we, ain't that something? Don't miss that. He said, it's only one. I've already taught y'all the truth. But if I come back and change and start preaching and teaching some other gospel, he said, even if we or an angel from heaven, if an angel comes down from heaven, ain't that something? If you see him floating down out of clouds, and he's coming with a new gospel, add this to the Bible. <laughs> uh, no. An angel may ever preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you. Let him be accursed. Let him be condemned to hell. That's what that means. Right. Now that's something. Because he said, if I do this, <laughs> ain't that something? He said, if I come back and I, I start preaching something crazy, another gospel, let me be condemned to hell. See, that's how, that's, that's how true this is. <laughs> that if I go left, listen, and I'm going to say what Paul said and apply it to myself. If I go left from the truth, me, Pastor Moore, uh -huh. I'm wrong. <coughs> this is still right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not above this. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It can't be another gospel. No. It's only one. Right. And it's rooted, wrapped up, tied up, tangled all up in Jesus. Amen. <laughs> if Jesus is not the end of this, that's another gospel. Amen. Amen. That's another gospel. Amen. Amen. He said, let that person be accursed. Let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. He reiterates it. He says it again, just in case y'all missed it. I'm going to say it again. And he says it again. Amen. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? If I still please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. See, what we have today, as I wrap this up, is people who want to please people. <laughs> Preachers who want to please people. Yes. Right. See, I could do this. I could do this. We don't have many people running in here breaking the doors down. So let me add a little sugar no, to the message. <laughs> I don't know. I like that. <laughs> let me let me let me water and dumb this down. Just to get all the wicked people in here. That anything goes. I'm not going to talk about sin. I, you, you're not going to feel convicted when you come here. You, you're going to feel good about yourself. Keep, keep, keep shacking up. God loves you. Come on. You can work on You can be an usher. Come on, come on in. Come on. You can have a. It doesn't matter. I I know you're bound by drugs, and you go to the clubs, and you're an alcoholic. I guess you know what. Let let me put you on the praise team. 
It doesn't matter if you come up here stumbling up the step, how dry I am. <laughs> That's okay. We're going to overlook that. God's working on you. We love you. <laughs> Guess what? We have to extend this building. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to extend it. Woo-wee. Anything goes, y'all. Let's go over there. Because I'm just going to hit nothing but, but great stuff building me up in my wickedness. No such thing as morality. Well, in fact, you know what? He don't even use the Bible no more. He threw that away. Oh, wow. And he, he just stands there and motivates folk and talk and lift them up and build them up. And, uh, ooh. They'll be breaking the door down. <laughs> breaking the door down. See my point? Because that's what people are looking for. That's what's happening out in California and some of these other places. Itchy ears. Just, just, just get a prayer line and do nothing but a prayer line for two hours. Get, get a proper, proper line line and then hold that for about three hours. Come and be entertained and the spectacular is going to happen tonight. People going to jump out of their wheelchairs and just all these promises sitting out flying. A stampede would happen. But guess what? This is one preacher who will never compromise. That doesn't bother me. No. I'm going to stay true to the gospel. And whoever wants to go, come here. And they're going to hear the truth. And guess what? We're going to get you into heaven. Oh yeah, play some truth. There's only one gospel that can save. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Only Jesus, now I'll finish with this, can save your soul. Only Jesus! Somebody shout, only Jesus! Only Jesus!